This is the first video in the Lathe 100 series, so this will be Lathe 101. Uh, in the 100 series we're going to cover some basics. If you're new to, to metal machining and don't understand what a lot of the terms are or the safety factors or how to do basic procedures, we'll have uh, some short videos on, on each of those topics. So to begin here we're going to start talking about the terminology of a lathe, um, specifically a metal lathe model 4400 from Sherline. The Different people will use terms a little differently, so I'm going to try to use the most common ones here, um, just so that you know what each piece and part is called if people are referring to different items and capacities and things like that. To begin, we have just simply the base of the lathe. Um, this gives the lathe uh, a location to bolt down to another table. It gives the lathe some mass and some stability. Uh, this is webbed on the inside, so there are reinforcements on the inside on, under the base to, to give it some more rigidity. So really this is um, the, what everything else is, is built on, right, is, is the bed of the lathe itself. Sorry, the base is the base of the lathe itself. Um, above the base we have uh, the bed, and the bed runs the full length as well. Um, the bed is where your, your tooling attaches. As part of the, the bed itself are the, these two dovetailed ways. Um, these ways are what help align all the tools. Next up we're going to go to the headstock down here. Um, the headstock is what's going to hold the spindle of the lathe, which is the, the spinning portion. Inside the headstock are some spindle bearings. Um, on this, on the Sherline models, there are permanently lubricated bearings, so you don't have to do any maintenance to them. Uh, the, this does uh, have the ability to turn, and it has a, a precision ground key underneath here to keep it aligned straight for when you want to do normal straight turning. And we mentioned the spindle. On this end of the spindle is a, a dual step pulley for running two different speeds basically a high range and a low range. The pulley goes back to the, the motor. Um, we've got the pulley guard and the belt guard, uh, a V-belt here, and then the speed control and on-off switch up top. One of the nice things on the Sherline is it is a variable speed DC motor, so with simply turning a knob you can increase or decrease the speed um, over a fairly wide range. Compared to a lot of other lathes, you're changing multiple belts and across multiple pulleys. This is just a much, much more convenient um, operation. If you start doing operations where you're changing sizes of parts or things along those lines and you're changing uh, speed frequently, you'll, you'll really great, greatly appreciate a variable speed control. Let's try to give you a little bit closer view here. On this end of the spindle, uh, is the, the spindle nose. It has an outer threaded section for attaching uh, chucks and face plates and things along those lines. And then it has an internal Morris taper for, and this is a number one Morris taper for holding more precision. You are going to get much better accuracy off the inside than you are off of the threaded. And we'll take some measurements of that. That's just the, the nature of, of threads versus tapers. So we're going to look at this area next. Um, underneath of here, there is the saddle itself, um, sometimes also referred to as a carriage. This is what basically attaches to the uh, bed and the ways. And then underneath is a lead screw, so it's completely protected and covered, which is nice. But it runs the full length of the bed, the lead screw does. And the saddle attaches to that lead screw for moving in the z-axis in this direction. On top of that is the, the cross slide, and the cross slide has its own uh, threaded screw to move in the x-axis. There are T-nut slots on top of the cross slide for attaching different fixtures and tool posts and other items you may want to secure there. This is one example of a tool post. Um, there are several different models and types and methods, whether they're turret posts or quick change tool posts or rocker tool posts such as this one, that, that have their different advantages and disadvantages and associated costs in, in the case of some of them are, are much more expensive. So these hand wheels 
um, on the 4400 model have a zero adjustability. So you can turn uh, this and there's a, a mark on the body of the motor housing here that aligns up with that. Um, this is a CNC version, so we do have the CNC motor as well on this axis and the CNC adapter. If we were looking at a, a non-CNC version, all of this would be gone and the hand wheel would attach directly to a shaft here. So next we're going to take a quick look at the tail stock. Um, there's a, a screw here to lock it um, to the bed or the ways. It will slide back and forth manually. Um, there is also inside of this a Morris taper number zero. This is known as the ram, the silver piece. The ram can be pushed forward and extended or retract um, with the hand wheel here. Again, zero adjust hand wheel for, for nice convenience and a small mark etched on the top. This knob will lock the, the ram so that it won't move in or out. Um, useful for, for some operations where um, you don't want any movement there, such as if you're holding a center. And then all the way down on the far end of the lathe, we have the Z-axis feed motor and CNC housing and Z-axis hand wheel. So this is what will turn that lead screw that we talked about earlier. And as you turn the lead screw, the saddle and cross slide will move along the length of the bed in the Z-axis. I briefly wanted to touch on safety at the end of this video as well. Uh, it's, it's a big topic and it, it deserves a lot of attention. It's definitely something you want to be aware of because these machines can be quite dangerous and, and can be quite hazardous if not treated with respect and, and certain precautions followed. I'll be pointing out safety items throughout all the videos as we go um, rather than sit here and tell you every single safety item off the bat. A couple of things I will state right now is safety glasses. So safety glasses, safety glasses, safety glasses. Always wear them. Um, these are included in the Ultimate Machine Shop package. I've got a, another brand that I prefer that, I, that are just sold by one of the local home centers. But just get something uh, that, that's going to give you a full coverage of your eyes and wrap around protection from the sides and a little bit of protection either close fitting to the face or shields on top so that chips can't fall in above. That's very, very critical because these can throw not only chips but also uh, cutting fluids and, and coolants and lubricants. One of the other items uh, that I started to kind of show here briefly as a pointer is a piece of tongs. These happen to be copper tongs. As you're cutting items on the lathe, you'll get a lot of chips and sometimes very long strings of chips. And you'll want to clear those out um, just so that they don't jam up and wrap around the spindle and also you can monitor the cutting operation a little more closely. You do not want to use your hand for that for two reasons. One, you'd be getting close to a high-speed spinning workpiece. And two, those chips and shards can be extremely sharp. Particularly the when you're cutting steel, they can be like razors. If you were to reach in there and try to pull something off and then the spindle grab it, it will, will cut you very deep at a minimum and it, it could do much, much worse um, as far as an injury. So you want to avoid that. Use something along these lines. I like these because um, if they do impact the tool, they're, they're copper, so they're fairly soft. So use something like this or uh, plastic, um, something soft. It would be my recommendation. Okay, I just have some uh, paint thinner and mineral spirits here, which is, is mainly used for cleaning the lathe. Um, it was the first liquid that I had at hand. Um, but definitely be aware of what the, the safety issues are around the various cleaners, and lubricants and coolants and, and other items you'll be using around the lathe. This one, um, you know, right on the front, it states that it's combustible, liquid and vapor harmful or fatal if swallowed. Um, it's an eye, skin, and respiratory irritant. Definitely take that into consideration when you're using it. There are a lot of the, the chemicals you'll use around the mill can be an irritant to your hands. So they make what's called a barrier cream for machinists. If you that, that will help protect your hands a little bit, or you can use some uh, thin latex gloves. 
something that uh, if it does get caught it'll it'll break off rather than pulling your hand in you don't want to be using big heavy uh, leather gloves or anything like that around here as a safety issue regarding the the spinning motion of the spindle um, the spindle by itself doesn't have a, a lot of parts sticking out so I mean you could cut yourself if you were to, to touch those threads hard enough and long enough um, but once you start putting face plates with holding clamps on there or chucks that have jaws that extend out beyond the radius of the chuck this becomes a very very dangerous area um, very very easy to hit your knuckles there and, and break a finger um, if, if you get hit hard enough so definitely a dangerous item there so one of the other common mistakes that a lot of people make is leaving one of the tommy bars um, or a chuck key inside the the tool here and then turning it on uh, that at that point becomes a projectile that can fly out so i've either been lucky enough or or uh, safe enough that i've never actually left a key in the lathe but i do know other people who have um, on wood lathes i don't know anybody who's done it on a metal lathe personally and when that fires up that that chuck will fly out at speed uh, go through drywall with no problem um, it's it can be quite the dangerous projectile so definitely be careful about leaving that in there there are a lot of other safety warnings and details on how to operate the lathe safely if you're in an area with with children around you definitely won't want to leave the machine plugged in so that they could just inadvertently turn it on you know playing with the buttons and end up injuring themselves so you'll have to take extra precautions if there are other people around be aware whenever you're operating the machine uh, that you may have on safety glasses but if there's somebody else walking by um, or that's watching you need to make sure that they have on uh, their safety glasses as well. well one other thing i'm going to mention here is the fact that some of these cutters and tools can be fairly sharp so handle them with care uh, even even if it's not a cutting edge, if it's an edge such as this, drawing your finger across that, uh, depending on how thick your calluses are, uh, if it has any burrs on it for a freshly cut piece, those can be quite dangerous and quite sharp. So, so be careful when handling these tools that you uh, don't cut yourself. So I did mention the, the use of copper or plastic or other soft tongs to clear away chips. Another option uh, of course, anything that keeps your hands away is good if you need to clear away smaller uh, chips and pieces rather than longer threads. Um, these little chip brushes work great, also good for cleaning up around the mill and applying some lubricants and things along those lines. And um, one other option would be what's known as an acid brush. Now these are really good for, for lubricant, but also good for getting in there and clearing away uh, chips and things that are, that are around the cutter. The standard warnings also apply as far as loose hair, uh, loose clothing, anything that can get caught in and, and wrapped around. These have some pretty high torque. Uh, the the, the Sherline mills, I, I like this as a starter lathe and, and even just for a hobby lathe or a secondary machine because it's, it's small and it, it's not going to um, easily kill you. Uh, I'll put it that way. I guess it's possible that, that you, this could cause your death, but um, most likely the type of injuries you're going to get from this, barring something being put in your eye, if you're not wearing safety glasses, are going to be minor cuts or broken fingers. Working on a larger device, uh, you can easily end up uh, where it's going to, to do a, a lot more damage to you, um, and, and including and up to taking your life or permanently disabling you. So this is a really nice lathe to start with because it gives you the confidence and it gives you the, the learning experience without being um, you know, an 800 pound monster that's going to break your arm or crack ribs or do other things if you, if you don't respect it correctly. So this is definitely um, a nice mill to start with, or sorry, this is definitely a nice lathe to start with uh, due to its smaller size, um, it does increase the safety factor uh, from the level of damage that this item could do to you. Still dangerous. Don't, don't believe that this is a toy, but um, it, it is definitely a lot less dangerous than a larger lather mill.